Hi, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Hope uh, I can be heard. I would like to have one comment at least, just to ensure that my I can be heard from the audience. Yes, sir. Right. Thank you, Ravin. Great. Great. Good morning uh, once again for uh, uh, for a Sunday morning. Today our guest lecture is on review of Blue Ocean strategy and opportunities for entrepreneurs. I know that uh, you have been going through a diploma, advanced diploma course on management and entrepreneurship for the last five to six months. And uh, from morning, you have been listening to some guest lectures. Good. Hope that uh, you are at home comfortably. But I visited the, your institute today uh, without being at home. Uh, you know, unless, unexpected situations can arise. So because of that, I visited the place. I thought that I will uh, have the session from your institute. So how are you? All fine. I would like to have a good morning from one of the ladies as well. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. So let's start. I think this is a one hour schedule session. So I would like to uh, complete that within that one hour or maybe a few minutes only. It might go extra uh, maybe uh, with your question and answer session. So uh, let me introduce to me first. I am Ajit Pereira. Uh, if you look at my career, I have started as a management trainee in one of the corporates uh, in Sri Lanka. Then uh, I worked in that company as well as two other PLCs. Of course, my career was in three PLCs predominantly and including finance, management, marketing and directly sales as well. I have been covering. And uh, last uh, tenor, of course, if you look at from 2017 to 19, I was working for a Singaporean company uh, as the regional head. And then thereafter, I have joined currently a company called PBSS where I'm the general manager for uh, uh, basically selling and implementing SAP, you know, one of the gold partner for SAP, uh, Enterprise Resource Planning System, uh, world's best. And so I represent that company currently. So other than that, of course, I have been uh, associated with this Blue Ocean strategy from the beginning. Though I delivered this session to you today, I have been delivering uh, multiple sessions at different institutes uh, on invitation as well as as a commercial aspect, uh, have been delivering this session uh, over a period of maybe I could say last uh, nine to 10 years. But I have been going slow. Only from last year, I have set up my company as well as Ocean Blue. You can see the brand on the uh, right top corner of the screen. So uh, let's go through quickly. Uh, so let me appreciate the Institute of uh, Chartered Professional Managers for inviting me to have this session with you. Hope that you will get some inputs from this session and to uh, do better in this course, as well as to pursue a career in the business journey uh, in the coming years to, uh, in the years to come. Wait till I uh, go for the changeover. Right. The contents of the program today, uh, I have not taken a very long uh, list of uh, areas to be discussed. Uh, I know that you have learned the Blue Ocean strategy uh, in the course, uh, in this current course that you are going through. Uh, but uh, I would like to give you a summary again in my, as my perspective about the Blue Ocean strategy. Uh, you must have gone through that in your uh, sessions. But of course, I would like to give an outline so that uh, we come to the context of the Blue Ocean strategy before we review the concept in terms of uh, the global phenomena, as well as my own uh, uh, learnings on the concept for the last uh, few years. And then we will talk about the Blue Ocean strategy as a journey. And finally, we will discuss how can entrepreneurs benefit from the knowledge. Of course, that will be the purpose of yours for this uh, uh, course. And of course, you will take that forward uh, into the future. Also, uh, we will also be touch upon the blue ocean strategy with ocean blue, what I am doing. And then if you are interested in the future, uh, maybe we can do sessions for your uh, organizations, for your institutions as well. So let's start with the blue ocean strategy in summary. So uh, let me introduce the blue ocean strategy, what you already know, or you will learn some uh, new 
uh, review uh, or new aspect of uh, blue ocean strategy as well in this session. Even though you don't learn something new in the first part, I'm sure that you will learn something new in the review part. So let's go through the blue ocean strategy in summary so that we come to the context. What is blue ocean strategy? Uh, blue ocean strategy is about creating new markets and avoiding competition. So if I have to answer, if somebody asks in short to give a 30 second answer, what is blue ocean strategy? I can say it is about creating new markets. It's about creating new market segments and avoiding your competition. We all know the markets are full of competition, whatever the industry sectors that you represent, whatever the companies and segments that you represent here, maybe from different business fields, you know the competition. And especially if you are in sales and marketing side, you must have already understood, or you, if you are already entrepreneurs by yourself, you would have already understood the, the, the intensity of the competition in the market. So the blue ocean strategy theme is you have to create new markets, avoid your competition. We all know if you look at 150 years before, some of the industries did not exit, exist. Uh, industries like automobile, industries like aviation, industries like management consulting, they did not exist 150 years before, but they were discovered later. And if you go back 50 years, and discount retailing, uh, mobile phones, coffee bars, these industries did not exist. I have taken certain examples. Okay, certain examples are technologically driven and you would come back and tell me, uh, sir, automobile aviation industries are basically technological uh, discoveries, but I have taken management consultancy as well. And in that sense, mobile phones are technological advancements, but discount retail and coffee bars are just the uh, kind of value innovations that they have uh, originated. So just look back 20 years. Smartphones did not exist. Cloud computing did not exist. Social media marketing did not exist. So if you look at the history and history by history, and these industries did not exist at that time. So even today, if you look forward, if you think forward, what are the new industries that can be created? What are the new market segments that can be created? 25 years from now. So if you are a very uh, value innovative uh, entrepreneur or value innovative uh, sales and marketing personnel in an organization, so you have to think through what new industries can emerge, what new industries I can make, I can create for the future. So these are some of the global examples, but we will slowly come down to our levels, our positions, what we can do in organizations. So finally, Blue Ocean Strategy recommends three things. The first one, you have to stop trying to beat the competition. All in day in and day out, what we try to do in our organizations is we try to beat the competition. We try to beat the competition and then win our market share. So the recommendation of Blue Ocean Strategy, one of the primary recommendation is you have to stop trying to beat the competition. And then, you have to create new market spaces. We will be discussing how we are going to create market spaces. So we have to create new market spaces or new segments or new industries. And what happens then? You make the competitors irrelevant. So you can do this within your industry. You can do this across the boundaries of your industry. And also you can do this outside your industry. So opportunities are there. So finally, Blue Ocean Strategy recommends Stop trying to beat the competition. You have to create your own markets and make the competitors irrelevant. Right. If you go forward, how can we do this? The core or the center stage or the central point of Blue Ocean strategy is value innovation. Value innovation, if I just spell out in a single screen, single picture, is this. You must have already learned this. So value innovation is reducing cost and increasing value at the same time. So if you look at your organization, if you look at the organizations that you work for, you can do many market competitive factors, eliminations and reductions if you consciously go through. So when you do the eliminations of market competitive factors and reductions, which do not matter to the customers and you will reduce the cost. And at the same time, you have to think of raising and creating 
of uh, very important market uh, competitive factors to uh, your product lines and service lines, which will increase the value to the customer. And where you reduce cost, you increase value at the same time, which is value innovation. So we will go forward and then discuss about this concept, how this can be created. So this is the central stage of the blue ocean strategy. I would also like to introduce to you three blue ocean uh, strategy tools, which will be the again central point of the uh, blue ocean strategy journey. Uh, even if you look at the all three books that have been introduced in the Blue Ocean Strategy Journey from 2005 to 2017, and these three Blue Ocean Strategy tools are the key, and they are basically uh, empowering these three tools because this is a journey. If you apply these tools very consciously with other guiding principles, frameworks, and concepts that have been uh, advocated in the books, so basically this uh, uh, blue ocean strategy can be created. So the tool number one is the strategy canvas. So this is an example of a strategy canvas that has been even advocated in the book. So I don't want to go into the details of the strategy canvas because I can detail this strategy canvas for one hour. Uh, I will just tell you an example, uh, Ringling Brothers and Barnum Bali were the industry leaders of the circus industry in, uh, in the early part of the 20th century. But this industry was going down by about 1980s. And then Barnum Bali and uh, Ringling Brothers were at the top of the circus industry and other regional uh, circus, circus groups were following the same value curve. If you look at the uh, Ringling Brothers and Barnum Bali value curve against the market competitive factors, and small regional circuses value curves, even though they are slightly below, but they are following the same shape of the value curve in terms of offerings uh, against the market competitive factors. So we will talk about the Circuit du Soleil value curve uh, in, after the next few slides. So I just want to introduce, this is the strategy canvas, which is the most important tool in this blue ocean strategy journey. Have you changed this? Have you maneuvered this? Have you managed this? will give you the benefit of the total blue ocean strategy process. Let's see the second tool. Second tool is about the four action framework. What is this four action framework? Four action framework, as we have already seen in the value innovation chart, one is eliminate, what to eliminate. So you have to ask very critical four questions from your business managers, from yourself, when you are going through the blue ocean strategy process which of the factors that the industry has taken for granted, which should be eliminated. Always there are factors when you have uh, matured as an organization, even if you have just started a few years before and, and, and if you have joined a new organization, there'll be always factors which the industry has taken for granted, this organization has taken for granted, which can be eliminated because that do not add value to the customers. And in the same way, there can be market factors that we are already offering the industry is already offering, but to this level, the industry does not expect. So you can reduce well below the industry standard where you will reduce your cost without reducing the values that you are giving to the customer. In the same way, what are the factors that you increase well above the industry standard? There can be all less factors. And these are the, these are the what marketeers and sales teams are always talking about and entrepreneurs are talking about. We have, we have to raise these bars. We have to raise these values so that we reach our customer well. And then creation, you have to create new factors. That's where we say, okay, based on your gut feeling, based on your experience, based on, uh, on your entrepreneurship ability, you have to create some new value factors that industry has never offered before. So these are the four critical questions that you need to ask yourself and your organization and your blue ocean strategy team if you have to create something new. Now, the third tool. Third tool is the same thing you are applying to the context. And after asking these questions, you will get answers to these questions. And as I have detailed in the uh, Circuit du Soleil, this circus industry strategy canvas, they found out what are the areas to be eliminated because customers did not 
uh, these factors did not much matter to the customers at that time because you have to understand with the context, with the region, and with the other social happenings during those days. Because when it comes to 1980s in US, uh, most of the uh, live uh, urban live entertainments, home entertainments, sporting events have emerged. So they did not want to take charge uh, their children to the circuses because the most the target group for circuses was mainly the children. So the parents have to accommodate, parents have to accompany the children. And now the situation has changed by about 1980s. This circus industry was going down. And then they identified this company called Circuit du Soleil. They identified Ringling Brothers, Barnum, Bali are still offering same uh, values. And, and now the customers don't mind. So that is why the industry is going down. So therefore they eliminated these factors. And they reduced some of the other factors like fun and humor and thrill and danger. And they raised a unique venue. I, I, I think you know that those days circus, circuses are traveling from city to city, but they did not do that. They really focus on only few cities. They stationed for months at one location. And then they created new aspects of uh, market competitive factors, which the industry has never offered. Like they created a team for the circus. They gave a refined environment, not a running uh, uh, like uh, places. And then they give a lot of artistic music and dance. So when you do that, they identify, they did the market research, they identified it attracted a new set of customers, not only the children, but adults and corporate groups. So if you look at this whole process, it was earlier the as is strategic canvas of the industry and of your organization. If you are representing an organization, we have your strategic canvas and also you can see your overall industry strategy canvas. Normally they converge when you go through the competition because you try to follow the market leaders. You try to go behind the market leaders and increase your values as well. And your as is strategic canvas becomes the become converge with the industry uh, strategy canvas. Then we apply the four action framework, ask these four critical questions. Then you look at these four critical answers to these critical questions through the ERRC grid. And then you draw the to be strategy canvas. That is definitely after a few market research by the team. And now you can see the same strategy canvas. How Circuit du Soleil, this Canadian circus company, how they emerge. They were a circus company in the industry. They did this change and they, how they came out. See how, what they have eliminated. Uh, if you look at the market competitive factors on the chart on the horizontal axis, star performers, animal shows, aisle concessions. Uh, I'm sorry, I think you can't see the next line. Multiple show arenas, they all eliminated. So they came to zero. They did not offer that to the customer. And they still uh, gave the fun and thrill, but it is at a lesser level than the industry leaders. But they created new factors like team, refined environment, multiple productions. So this attracted a whole heap of new customers and the circus industry became uh, circus industry became active again. Actually, that was not circus. It was a mix of, uh, I would say it was a mix of opera, stage drama, musical show. Uh, I'm sure that if you have seen a circus, even in the recent years, even a Chinese circus, now they follow the same theme. So the globally circus industry has been changed. So this company could earn in 20 years what Ringling Brothers and Barnum Bali earned over 100 years. So that is the blue ocean strategy, which you have to consciously apply. So in summary, uh, this is the blue ocean strategy. Let's look at some, some of the other aspects as well. Now, blue ocean strategy uh, actually introduces four formulation principles. If you have to go ahead and uh, create a blue ocean strategy, first you have to formulate the strategy. So formulation process is guided by four uh, critical principles. Since we have a very limited time, we will look at these principles in short. The first one is you have to reconstruct your market boundaries. And there are, there are generally misconceptions about the market boundaries. And we uh, normally introduce six parts framework for this. There are six areas that you need to look at. Uh, I would just tell you one example, you have to look across alternative industries when you are critically looking at creating a blue ocean strategy. What the alternative industries 
offer. Uh, if you look at maybe FMCG industry, what will be looking at, what will be offered from the pharmaceutical industry, what will be offered to a customer in the automobile industry. If you sometimes look at some of the other industry offerings, they are not innovations, can be simply applied to the, the, the second industry, and then you can do a blue ocean strategy. So like this, there are six areas that is been questioned and that has to be followed when you are creating a, a blue ocean strategy. And the number two is you have to focus on the big picture. And most of the organizations, they are strategic management process. I'm sure if you are joining, if you are already working for organization, you, have, you must have gone through annual planning, annual strategy session. You must have gone out with the company, a senior management team, or maybe you yourself have taken your management team as the entrepreneur or as the director, as the, uh, as the MD. And you, we go through a lot of numbers. We don't see the big picture. We get bogged down to our already uh, known industry value factors. We don't think beyond. So we have to think the big picture. If you are creating a blue ocean strategy, they are very clearly spelling out four-step visualization process where you have to visualize what's happening outside, what's happening with the customers, what's happening with non-customers. So there are areas that you need to look at. And then the third one, reach beyond existing demand, third formulation principle. And we always look at our customers. Here we spelled out three tiers of non-customers. Always in our industry, there are three types of non-customers. Number one, there are soon to be non-customers. Customers who come to us because who customers who come to the industry because there's no any other option. And the second, the cust refusing customers. That there's a set of customers who are now almost not coming to the industry. First one is soon to be non-customers. And the second one is refusing non-customers. They are not coming to our industry. But they are potential uh, participants of our industry, but they are not uh, actually accommodating our industry. They are not purchasing products from our industry. Third one is unexplored non-customers. There, there will be always an unexplored set of customers we don't even look at. Okay, we think for this industry, they are not a customer. We keep them out. So if you create a blue, if you want to create a blue ocean strategy, you have to definitely go through these uh, three tiers of non-customers. And the final one is in terms of formulation, get the strategic sequence right. And after going through these three formulation principles, you have to get the, you have to create exceptional utility to the customer so that he is attracted to our industry to our organization because you are creating the blue ocean strategy. And then you have to create the exceptional utility. Then you have to give a strategic price, not a very high price, not a very low price. You have to determine based on so many other factors, the strategic price. And there are so many uh, deliberations in this blue ocean strategy, how to create, how to make your uh, strategic price. And then you have to meet a target cost because why do we do a blue ocean strategy? because we want to create much more higher profit, higher profitable growth and better uh, sustainable uh, ROI and overall better band, brand positioning in the market. So we have a four step sequential process starting from uh, exceptional utility, strategic pricing, target costing and adoption. How you adopt this total strategy into the organization. So even before you start the execution, you have to think through the uh, what are the challenges you must you will be getting, and all these will be discussed under the formulation principles. If you have any questions, uh, we will have a question and answer session at the at the end, so you can uh, raise those questions. So the next is there are four formulation four execution principles the Blue Ocean Strategy has advocated. Initially, uh, when they launched the Blue Ocean Strategy first book in two thousand five they had only two execution principles. But in the second book, what they released after a decade in 2015, they came out with another two execution principles. Let's look at the first two. Now, when you are executing, as you are executing any other strategy, always there will be hurdles. So there are four hurdles the Blue Ocean Strategy talks about, which you have to, which you have to manage, which you have to overcome. So there are four hurdles that they discuss. Uh, hurdles like resource hurdle, motivational hurdle. How, how can you address these issues that come up when you are trying to execute this, which is the most difficult challenge. And the second one, build the execution into a strategy. 
here basically they talk about the three step fair process and uh, basically how to engage people how to explain the process and how how shall we get the expectation clarity uh, to the team through the other middle managers so that they perform to the task and the two new principles have been introduced as i told in the second book uh, where they want to align value profit and people proposition what is it now we are talking about new value value innovation uh, to the customer so this value and our profit aspect the value is to the customer profit is to the company because we are talking about increasing value by reducing cost increasing the profit so this value proposition profit proposition and ultimately we have to get this done through people and people proposition yeah, and all these have to be uh, nicely synchronized and implemented so they talk about the implementation process in detail uh, these three strategy propositions and the last one of the execution principle and renew blue oceans uh, even though i say last of course this should be the last anyway because after you have created after you have executed the blue ocean strategy basically you have to protect and renew you have to go into a culture you have to protect and renew blue oceans if you look at all the industries not the same company has been innovating over the years uh, one good example is ford p model in 1908 in us automobile industry they created the blue ocean by giving a standard one color one model car ford p model in 1908 they increased their market share to 62% by 1922 but uh, thereafter they stopped creating blue ocean strategy because what happens is once you create you get into that mindset and you are the market leader you forget to create again so if you don't renew your blue oceans your market leadership is gone and then general motors took over they created a uh, different models of cars different standards for fun and humor and all that and ultimately they became the market leader by 1950 with 50% market share and like this uh, even in the same industry if a same company can keep the market leadership so maybe they are continuously creating the blue ocean strategies so from time to time if the companies are changing that means they lose on the way and somebody else creates a blue ocean strategy so renew renewal of blue ocean strategy is the key otherwise you will maintain your market leadership position or the profit leadership position in the industry maybe for a very short time so there are four barriers that we discuss uh, in the in the study uh, to the imitation because once you create a blue ocean strategy you have to create some barriers so that others cannot imitate okay i know uh, if technologically driven industries they can create uh, the patent related legal related barriers but if it is concept related process related uh, uh, industries it's very difficult like management consulting but you can still create some uniqueness usps in your uh, organization so that others cannot easily follow so you have to keep on creating adding so many things to the blue ocean strategy so that uh, you you widen you lengthen you deepen your blue ocean strategy so that others cannot follow at the same speed and you have to renew this at individual business level as well as at the corporate strategy level so these are the four execution principles and we discuss for formulation principles those are the guiding principles and take you through the blue ocean tools blue ocean strategy tools to come out with the to be strategic canvas let's move forward so there are some other guiding principles that they have spelled out in the third book that they have uh, basically uh, launched in 2017 they call it blue ocean shift and the one is red ocean traps and they introduce 10 red ocean traps uh, a entrepreneur on or an organization could get into uh, while creating the blue ocean strategy while doing your own business that there are 10 red ocean traps that you have to avoid and then they talk about the components of blue ocean shift when you are making a shift what are the key components to look at like things like humanness and the competence uh, the, the confidence of the people that you have to maintain and the third one is fundamentals of market creating strategy uh, we have heard shum peters have done the uh, innovation lessons to us in 1950s and he talks about uh, disruptive innovation uh, this uh, creative destruction 
and here uh, they actually say blue ocean strategy is not a, only about the disruptive creation or the disruptive innovation and you can do non disruptive creation as well i think we will be talking about those things and then you need to understand the mind of a blue ocean strategist those people who have created who have given the leadership who have been behind creating blue ocean uh, strategies their mind you need to read and there are examples of uh, giving different uh, mindsets and what kind of mindset they had to create these blue ocean uh, strategies maybe uh, because of the region they were living because of the experiences they have gone through in the lifetime so they have gone through different mindsets and that helped them to create blue ocean strategies and these are not very highly out of the uh, out of the box or out of the world ideas these are very generic ideas which anybody can take uh, can take through and create a blue ocean strategy and this is another key area because we all know when we are working in organization whether it is your organization whether you are working for an organization it's very difficult to get the people alignment so they talk about this humanness confidence and creative competence how you can align together to get the maximum of the people uh, basically basically to get the voluntary cooperation rather than getting the compulsory execution right we'll go to the next area of the uh, blue ocean shift process now finally in the third book they talk about now in the first and second book they talk about the blue ocean strategy concepts guidelines principles frameworks and all that but they do not give us a order how to create a blue ocean strategy the third book on the blue ocean strategy called is called blue ocean shift and they give the clear process it is a five step process i will put down all the five steps at once and they identify five steps as first you have to start you have to identify the right place to start it is not the geographical location it's where you should conceptually start and the right team you have to appoint the right team and there are a lot of guidelines given when you are appointing the team and you have to understand where you are now and we are current as is strategy canvas you could remember i was referring to this banam and bali and the circus industry strategy canvas so you understand where you are current strategy canvas it is not just a meeting inside the organization you need to get your managers you need to get your executives to go out and see whether uh, the strategy canvas that you will draw in your boardroom is the same strategy canvas out there because you will say we are very high on this aspect on this market competitive factor when you sit down in the boardroom but when you go out to the market it's totally vice versa so you have to go out and find out what is your as is strategy canvas and the, then the third one then of course you have to target and in this process you will identify hidden pain points of the customers and uh, non customers you will meet you will meet disgruntled unhappy customers and then you will understand what we have not been given sometimes they are the most crucial points we have missed in the process and sometimes we are giving the customers what they do not mind much so you have to understand in this process this is the research that you have to do without outsourcing to a market research team and you have to do you with your executives with your managers and the fourth step is you need to after going through the reconstruction of market boundaries the first formulation principle now you have to start reconstructing your market boundary you have to say okay i have to widen here i have to deepen here and then you have to find out think through the alternative routes so all these guidelines are given under these areas uh, this is a quite uh, huge area so i am just trying to wrap up within a very short time so we don't have time to go into the details so if you are interested there'll be further readings and also i will give you some guidelines at the end of the session as well and then finally you have to make your move because different uh, teams uh, different organizational uh, business units will come out with uh, different ideas for their blue ocean strategy finally uh, you know you are as a strategy canvas you have uh, gone out and found out the current actual situation of your as a strategy canvas and now uh, basically uh, you will have to select based on the proposals coming from the teams and you have to do again rapid market test and launch the concept so this is the overall idea of the blue ocean strategy 
now we will look at the uh, review part of the blue ocean strategy i think this part you may have learned uh, whatever i have discussed up to now you may have already learned and if you have not learned maybe the last part because most of the classes or most of the courses go through only the first part not the the second part like the other guiding principles execution principles you may have not discussed so you can go for further readings if you are interested so let's look at this uh, blue ocean strategy as a review uh, what it is and where is the context now i have been discussing about the blue ocean strategy but where is this how to start this and uh, at what level a company and when a company in which level which situation they should start the blue ocean strategy we will talk about now we see today a lot of overcrowded industries and the products are competing each other brands are competing each other on the same shelf so in your industry whatever the industry you will say the competition is high so overcrowded industries and head to head competition uh, the price competition feature competition head to head competition happen and some companies uh, in order to uh, keep their position in order to grow they differentiate some other companies they go for the low cost they go for the low cost they try to be the lowest in the market by because they can't further differentiate they can't they don't have any other feature so they go for the low cost they try to reduce their cost structure so these are the two differentiation and low cost are the two uh, strategies that have been even uh, advocated by michael porter uh, in his uh, studies and that is why uh, the companies try to drive a competitive advantage basically the competitive edge either by differentiating or by going low cost because they want to drive a competitive advantage why they want to drive a competitive advantage each player wants a bigger market share each player wants a bigger market share in the market because you assume when you have a bigger market share you will have a sustainable and profitable growth you will have a sustainable and profitable growth over the years so this context has brought us to very highly competitive market what happens always market share and profits are not on the same direction beyond a particular point when you try to increase your market share i'm sorry i don't know whether you can see this green uh, uh, the graph the green line beyond a point when you try to increase the market share and your profitability comes down because your cost structure goes up and uh, to uh, to attract more customers sometimes you have to sacrifice more uh, margins prices more discounts and then you have to give something more new value factors have to be created in the process what happens because you are giving kind of homogeneous products uh, in this market and then your margins come down and as a result you will get into a shrinking profit pool ultimately your whole industry become a shrinking profit pool nobody is going to win everybody is in the same shrink profit pool and we are trying to earn our 1 rupee in this shrink profit pool so this whole context is built into a red ocean market why we say red ocean this is cutthroat competition and you will say you will hear from your sales teams if you are yourself selling and this person has offered much better discount this person has given another offer an additional value and he has increased uh, giving these these offers so ultimately and you are competing in the existing market and it's very tough and in confrontation when you try to give more what happens you lose your margins you lose your profitability because you always try to beat the competition and exploit the existing demand you are looking at the industry and the segment you try to exploit from that industry and from the segment so as against this only this blue ocean markets were born you can do this you can create uncontested market spaces it is just beyond your neighbor's house it is not far in terms of uh, perception you can create a uh, blue ocean market to the customers and you can make the competition irrelevant and ultimately you are creating and capturing new demand which are which are who are coming to your industry who are coming to your market this is not the diversification diversification means you are stepping into another industry which is again competitive this is creating your own markets or physically creating or it could be even much, uh, mentally you are creating a new product new service to the customer customer perceive this as a totally new thing and customers are attracted so this is how the blue ocean 
uh, markets were created. Blue ocean strategy was created to create a blue ocean. And this is the first review. So if you look at the blue ocean in a context of the competition customer and your organization, you can see your consumer problems is one circle and competitor offerings is another circle and your competence is another circle. So if you look at, if you're offering, if you're offering the red area, so your customer problems are there and your competitor and yourself are trying to solve the customer problems in the same way or in the same box in the same circle or triangle. So that means you are competing head on. But if but, what if you choose the blue area where you are solving customer issues in your own way, in a new way, in a brand new way, where customer feels nobody else gives this option, nobody else gives uh, this solution. So you have to create, even if you are selling the same product and you have to create some surroundings through other market value factors that customer feels such. So that's where you create the blue ocean. Okay, as you already know, authors of Blue Ocean Strategy are uh, one South Korean professor, uh, Chan Kim, and the uh, US lady, Mrs. Reni Mobogne, and they have created this concept of Blue Ocean Strategy. And actually they have done a study, uh, their doctoral study in US in 1980s and 90s. They came out with many Harvard Business Review articles and subsequently, they gave a uh, Harvard Business Review, call, uh, Review article called Value Innovation, which is the core of the Blue Ocean Strategy in 2004, which was expanded and converted to the first book as the Blue Ocean Strategy in 2005. So they are the authors. In fact, how the Blue Ocean Strategy happens. So it happens in their study of 150 strategic moves done by the companies in 108 organizations. And in fact, they have covered 30 industries uh, and, and they have studied uh, a period of 120 years from then and going back to 1900s. And their study, uh, their study period was 10 years. The both uh, professors studied uh, this whole concept for a period of 10 years, but they studied 120 years. And they identified from their 150 strategic moves and they found out only 14% of the uh, strategies they studied were, the, were in the blue oceans. Others were all in red ocean. They, are, they were competitive strategies, not the creative strategies. See the result. And the turnover impact of these blue ocean strategies of 14% was 38%. For example, if you look at those 150 strategic moves, 14% uh, means about 31. 31 strategies were only the blue oceans, but they gave 38% impact in terms of total revenue generated by these companies in that period. See the profit impact. Profit impact is much more greater. So the 14% blue ocean, this 31 blue ocean, 31 blue ocean strategies, they found out from 150 strategic moves they studied, generated 61% of the profits of these overall 150 strategic moves of the companies. So that is that powerful. So that's why the blue ocean strategy is so powerful. If you can create one, you will be leading the market for a few years. And blue ocean strategy is not new. As I have already spelled out this 4T model in 1908, of course, they created the blue ocean strategy. And 100 years later, Tata Nano tried to create the blue ocean in 2008, but they failed subsequently. Oh, they have found out by research what, they, what happened to them. And another important point that I would like to highlight is blue ocean strategy takes you up uh, as an organization in the competition ladder. What is the competition? Initially, most of the organizations are in the product brand competition. You are competing with other brands because your products are homogeneous. You compete with other brands only. And the, when you take up in the competition ladder, competition has few layers. And the next is the product form competition where we talk about substitutes. If you compete with the substitutes, that means you have take, uh, gone up to the next stage as well. So if you compete with the substitutes uh, while competing with your homogeneous brand, you are, you are elevated to one level. And the next one is product category competition. So if you are competing not only with your competitive brands and you are competing with other forms of the products and also other category of products also. So that means if you are uh, widening 
and you are elevating the capabilities of your products and solutions that you offer to the market. So you are going into the category competition. So if you are creating a blue ocean strategy, you will see you are getting elevated because if you are competing in the red ocean, if you are following only the competitive strategies, you are mostly competing in the brand competition. Okay, some companies come, might come up to the form competition level as well. But if you want to introduce your products much wider to a, uh, to a much wider customer uh, segment, so then you have to move up in the competition ladder, giving form competition, category competition, and they are much up there. If you look at form competition, category competition, and customer's budget competition, and then the need competition. Okay, when, you, when it comes to the budget competition, customers have a, when, when a customer has a need, uh, they have a particular budget to satisfy that need. And then they come down to, to satisfy that need filtered by their budget capabilities, disposable income capabilities. They come down to product category and then come down to product form and then finally to the brand. Let's say a customer wants, a uh, customer is thirsty and uh, when he is on the road and he, he knows his budget that he can spend to drink something. Let's say he select the product category uh, whether it is a uh, soft drink or uh, let's say uh, hot warm drink. And then he goes, let's say the once he knows the product category, he selects whether it is coffee or tea. And then he goes to the brand competition. Let's say he selects his brand of the coffee, uh, whether he will go to the barista, whether he will uh, drink a Lipton tea or whatever. So like that customer goes through in his decision-making process all this competition in his mind because competition happens in the minds of the customer. So when you are creating a blue ocean strategy, you should feel that you are elevated to the higher levels of competition. Right. And another important aspect of blue ocean strategy, it challenges Michael Porter's differentiate or low cost strategy. I'm sure you would have heard of Michael Porter's generic uh, strategy recommendation a uh, company has to either differentiate or go low cost without stuck in the middle if you have to be uh, successful. There, he's talking about the competitive uh, markets, red ocean markets. Now, in the blue ocean, we do something else. Rather than doing differentiate or low cost, we try to do both together. How you do that? Through the value innovation. I hope you can remember I introduced this chart with the uh, call value innovation where Elimination and reduction of unnecessary factors happen and you reduce the cost to the company and raising and creating factors happen at the same time, which are very much important to the customer and you increase the value to the customer and then you create a value innovation. So basically the differentiate and low cost can both be done together in the case of blue ocean strategy. And overall, uh, blue ocean strategy is a strategically different approach. If you look at these concepts, I'm not going into go into these details because I have taken I think, a little more time by now. Uh, if you look at the red ocean strategy is something that we all know. We go through in our organizations day in and day, day out. When you go to the market, we can see a red ocean strategic approach the companies follow and a whole heap of things. We are very much customer focused. Customer is always right. That's what our marketing gurus have uh, taught us. And we are asked to do the benchmarking, benchmark with the industry. And we do the segmentation and we try to exploit existing demand. Okay, as Michael Porter said, we say, okay, either differentiate or low cost, you can't do both together. And we try to follow the market leaders. We try to imitate what others do. And we improve upon that little improvements to the, our products and service and the, the total solution package that we offer to the customer. Basically, we even when we are, we are an entrepreneur, we try to introduce something that we know, something already there, get into a market that is already established and because we can easily sell. And we basically generate a me too business and slightly we try to be better, me better business. And we are talking about substitutes. So like this, there are so many concepts that we have learned in our marketing and management, strategic management lessons. Now look at all these are challenged by blue ocean strategy. So I'm not going into the details of these. It takes time. Uh, 102, first 102, it is not only the customer focus. You need the non-customer focus. Sometimes 
more non customers are outside the industry than the customers so why you only focus on the customers and there are ways that we can attract these non customers like coca cola went into water because more customers are outside the industry water is uh, drunk by many people than coca cola so that's one of the strategy and then customer doesn't know what he wants this is one of the main arguments because we say customer is always right here blue ocean strategy comes up and say customer doesn't know what he wants because most of the new creations are customers have never been asked customers have never asked for those creations and it is the companies have which have created these uh, new products new solutions we all know starting from iphone starting from mobile phone starting from even automobile no customer has asked for when they were going on the horse in us in uh, i think last part of the 19th century when they were traveling on horse carriages they never asked for automobile they asked for a high speed horse carriage better horse carriage much more beautiful horse carriage but they never asked for automobile so it is the responsibility of companies it is a social responsibility as well all these corporates to create something new continuously create something new to give to the people so like this there are so many other aspects that they challenge on our traditional approach and again another very key one when it comes to the blue ocean if you look at the leadership responsibility of a organization what the leadership of a organization does is he manages the operation he manages the business if you look at a business organization actually this is applicable not only to the business organization this is applicable to the government sector this is applicable to the ngo sector as well let's look at for our discussion business sector now if you look at the overall business management encompass two major concept you have to manage the operation you have to manage the strategy so business leaders whatever the level you are uh, especially if you are at a lower level and middle level you will be more engaged in operation and if you are uh, in the higher level you will be more engaged in the strategy and today of course we see even most of the senior people are engaged in the operation more than the strategy so that is what has happened to i think most of the, uh, the organizations where they don't create much better strategies they don't create blue ocean strategies so how to discharge now if you look at the business strategy responsibility there are ways of discharging this uh, blue uh, the business strategy we'll keep the operation the side when it comes to the business strategy uh, one can a leader can discharge his strategy responsibility through competitive model and creative model so that's where we say if you are in the competitive mode you are discharging uh, basically you are you are with the red ocean strategy if you follow the competitive model you are in the red ocean strategy you are in the red ocean markets you are day in day out you are competing trying to get a market share it's good as long as you make money even the red ocean strategy is good it doesn't always recommend that you have to go with the blue ocean strategy you have to find your own money to create blue ocean strategy and sometimes by being in the red ocean markets and creative model is blue ocean strategy so you have to have a balance of uh, strategies for different businesses different product lines that you have when you have the blue ocean strategy you can straight away unless otherwise you are backed by a uh, maybe venture capitalist you can straight away or you don't have your own funds you can go ahead, go ahead and introduce a totally new concept which you don't know whether the market will accept or not so but established organizations uh, can always have different units creating blue ocean strategies so this is the leadership responsibility that we would like to uh, that i would like to share with you as you have heard from robert kaplan's time in search of excellence their book they had brilliant companies those days excellent companies which were the management gurus in terms of 1980s and but we saw after 5 6 years all those companies which became excellent companies in search of excellence in 1980s failed and good to great companies uh, introduced by jim collins all failed after few years so we don't find excellent companies throughout the history continuously starting from the beginning up to date and in the same way we don't find excellent industries certain industries become good in certain uh, period of time and those industries fail after some time because industries are uh, ultimately carved by people and the, uh, based on the society's needs and wants industries do change so the companies have to change 
So no perpetual excellent companies, no perpetual excellent industries were found in the history. So what is important is the US strategic move in the context that you are in. And some of the blue ocean strategies are very simple because that was new to that context. Example, a QB house in Japan was just a, a barber shop, haircut shop, but they introduced a totally novel concept to the context of Japan against the culture. And that became a hit into the market. So that became a blue ocean. That's a very simple concept. So like this, you have to understand the context, societal needs and the changes in the generations, and you can create new strategic moves. And if you find the companies have never been perpetually excellent, industries have never been perpetually excellent, it is only the strategic move. So you have to study these strategic moves, what are the pros and cons, how they did that in that context, and how we can learn from this to make one blue ocean strategy in our organizations. And all this blue ocean strategy is not technological innovation per se. Some blue ocean strategies are backed by a technological innovation like Apple or maybe IBM introduced their PCs or maybe uh, Tesla. So some blue ocean strategies are backed by technological innovations, but it is not only the technological innovation. There are many technological innovations like uh, Motorola Iridium. They first came to the market with the mobile phone, but that was not a success. And even Apple uh, PDA in 2001, they introduced a technological innovation, but that didn't become a value innovation. And then even Google Glass for that matter, that did not become a, a value innovation. That was a technological innovation. So like this blue ocean strategy is not product innovation. Sometimes just by innovating a product, it doesn't become a, a blue ocean strategy. And even it is not only a process innovation. This will be backing uh, definitely a blue ocean strategy. Blue ocean strategy is only value innovation. You have to create exceptional value to the customers, market segments that you are targeting at. And another point, blue ocean strategy does not replace red ocean strategy. And because if you assume uh, blue ocean strategy will be the path and no red ocean strategies, it is not it is not a go because red ocean has uh, strategies have to be there. You have to be good in red ocean strategies. You have to earn money. Your cash cows have to be there and you have to compete. But if you are, let's say, if you have few businesses, if you have few product lines, if you are representing few regions, if you find certain regions, certain product lines, certain business units are now making losses for the last one year, two years, they have been continuously making losses. No point of continuing the business. See whether you can do something by uh, adding value in terms of blue or red ocean strategy or uh, otherwise think of a blue ocean strategy create something totally new with regard to that business unit with regard to that product line so over the years i have been now delivering this blue ocean strategy session actually i started the journey in 2011 and in that year after about four months of uh, uh, actually putting down so many context uh, into the powerpoint presentation I was thinking because the book doesn't give a proper definition of the blue ocean. It gives a lot of context. It, it gives a lot of text and knowledge and all that, uh, but it doesn't define the blue ocean strategy. But after four months of study in 2011 itself, I defined blue ocean strategy and I don't have that presentation now, but I had a picture of that slide, which I had taken uh, long uh, years back. I think even I have defined by myself this blue ocean strategy, which you will not find anywhere. This is unique to me. And I looked at this blue ocean strategy while preparing your presentation uh, two days before. And I find it still it is valid after 11 years uh, because first four months after doing the blue ocean strategy study, I did this. This every term is unique and I can explain for hours. Uh, basically, this is the definition of the blue ocean strategy. In short, uh, you can further uh, shorten as I have started the session. But this covers every aspect of blue ocean strategy. Hope you can go through. Uh, I don't want to read it. Right. Anyway, I will read once a value innovating business strategy which creates a new market space within, outside, or 
within outside or across the boundaries, uh, across the existing market boundaries. Because everything we have examples, hundred plus examples. I can share with you from the books as well as from the subsequent readings. So this is not the time for that. So we have many uh, examples of creating blue ocean strategy within outside and across the boundaries in the given context. It is always within the given context in order to beat the competition, not by outbeating them, but by making them irrelevant in the new market space, which earns a substantial financial gain, quite significant market share and a uniqueness in brand positioning for a fairly reasonable time of period. But you have to protect your blue ocean and you have to create your new blue ocean cycle faster. Otherwise, somebody will definitely take you through. So this is the definition of the blue ocean strategy, which I would like to give. Now, this blue ocean strategy is not a one uh, static uh, learning. It is a journey as I have defined. Actually, this is not these are not there in the books. I have defined based on my last 10 years experience with the blue ocean strategy concept. It's a journey. In fact, from one side, I have started a journey as well. What are the key milestones? In the book one and book two, you will learn a lot of concepts. As I said, frameworks, principles, that is about the blue ocean strategy learning. And it will give a lot of concepts, learnings and guiding ideas. And the third book that they have launched as the blue ocean shift will give you a blue ocean strategy process, how to go through the process, starting from the appointing the right team, and then uh, going to the market and studying the ASI strategy canvas and all that process will be uh, deliberated by the third book called Blue Ocean Strategy Process with some other guiding principles as well. And here I come up and say, you need to get the experience of a Blue Ocean Strategy execution. You need to get the experience of a Blue Ocean Strategy. It is different to, because we know how to difficult, how, how difficult uh, to implement things in the organization, even in the competitive strategy. So blue ocean strategy is something totally new. So if you go through one execution, you will have your own experience of implementing one in your organization or even in the organization you are working for. With that, you will get this authoritative knowledge where you will be a blue ocean strategy leader. You will be able to tell somebody else, this is how it has been done. You can advise somebody. If you are going through two, three such implementations and with that, uh, our leaders, organizational leaders should be able to create a culture, uh, create a generation of creating blue ocean strategies and even to take our economy forward because this is very important. We know in US, most of the people are very innovative and they create a lot of things. But us, of course, based on the culture we have gone through and our education and our funding, uh, we don't have that kind of funding capabilities. And because of that, of course, we are mostly getting to this uh, competitive strategy. Most of the, even the people at the very senior level, chairman, managing director level, they go through all this and finally say, we will stop and we will wait for some time. Uh, they don't take that uh, very tough decisions. And most of the creative uh, are, are not getting implemented in the market. So we have to create a blue ocean strategy culture that you can do after you have the leadership. What you can, how you can lead this, you have to get the execution experience of a blue ocean strategy. So this is the journey which I have started traveling through. And this will be a good thing uh, if you can also do in your organization, maybe in a small way. Right, we are coming to the last topic, benefits for entrepreneurs, because you are, I think title is a review of blue ocean strategy and the benefits for entrepreneurs. Benefits for entrepreneurs are many. Uh, they have to be cautiously follow these things. I think there are about 10 benefits I'm talking about. Though I am I have taken some additional time, it is okay. I will go through another five to 10 minutes. Achini is there. It's okay, sir. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Achini. Hope the our team is not hungry. So we will go through another five to 10 minutes and then we'll talk about uh, eight to 10 uh, benefits for entrepreneurs. It could be startup entrepreneurs. It could be established entrepreneurs. Let's say the first one, this blue ocean strategy has been done by different types of organizations. So if you are an entrepreneur and there's no risk because blue ocean strategies have been done, small and large companies, young and all managers, only thing your mindset. And companies in attractive and unattractive industries, the good example is the circus, uh, as I told you, because I took only one example. 
and there are new entrants who have come up come out with the blue ocean strategy and also establish uh, established companies have also created blue oceans like like uh, chrysler again automobile company 1980s they were established company they created a blue ocean by introducing the minivan like uh, cross vehicle between a car and a suv and then private companies have done public companies have done like in malaysia some of the government institutions have done the blue ocean strategy and business enterprises and ngos have done uh, uk comic relief uh, ngo they have done the blue ocean strategy and companies in low and high tech companies you know apple has done and even the uh, even the circus industry companies have done so so good news for entrepreneurs is many uh, uh, different profiles of organizations have done this so actually entrepreneurs can do that and the number two and this process of innovating is a less risky approach now most of the entrepreneurs we know okay they take decisions by gut feeling they do trial and error they do a lot of mistakes and go through the process now here you don't want to make any mistakes because you go to the market you see yourself you appreciate what customers say you see what non customers say you listen to the disgruntled customers unhappy customers and you devise your strategy so this is a less risky approach there's no trial and error and mostly you are right when you come and implement the blue ocean strategy so this is a less risky approach rather than taking some gut feeling based entrepreneurial approach uh, blue ocean strategy process is a less risky and here uh, we always say okay entrepreneurs have to be very innovative especially nowadays we talk about uh, innovative entrepreneurs will definitely succeed to create a blue ocean strategy you don't want to be an innovative even you don't want to be an entrepreneur to be uh, create a blue ocean strategy so anybody can create a blue ocean strategy if you consciously apply these concepts to the uh, culture and to the society to the organization that you are working for or working with so entrepreneurs need not to be innovative to create a blue ocean strategy because this is very scientific thinking like the red ocean strategies that we were creating through the michael porter's concepts conceptual frameworks now this has become a science innovation has become a science through blue ocean strategy and the profits and profitable growth the brand positioning that you will achieve is much much greater than red ocean strategy so if you create one uh, rest assured if you protect it for the next 10 years you will be having much greater profits as an organization you will be leading the industry and competition competition will not be able to follow you if you protect that uh, blue ocean well and if you uh, add that with a lot of uh, widening uh, deepening principles of the blue ocean strategy and then nobody will be able to follow so you have to really protect the blue ocean strategy even though it is unprotectable and uh, the other advantage for the entrepreneurs is now if you do a strategic canvas proper evaluation even though you don't apply a, you don't implement a blue ocean strategy there will be benefits even in your red ocean markets because when you go through those market value factors and how you fare by and how others are faring by in the market sometimes you will get lessons okay these aspects i have to slightly increase then i will be getting a better market share i will be getting a better profitability i can charge a better price for the customer because i am giving some uh, improved values so forget about the blue ocean strategy if you go through a proper as is strategy canvas approach uh, and then you can create something better by giving more for less by giving more for more and improving upon that concept and then you will be able to better uh, your red ocean strategy itself so uh, therefore uh, this as is strategy canvas and preparation of the to be strategy canvas is a good concept even for the even to compete because most of the companies even in a annual strategic session they don't go through this they go through the numbers they go to the market share market dynamics market share and put down certain numbers excel sheets and then presentations and that is done they don't really go deeper down and blue ocean strategy exercise Uh, doesn't need to link with the annual strategy plan you can do it at any time in the year and this process will take 6 to 12 months to create one so therefore this benefits uh, the entrepreneurs and again 
another good point for the entrepreneurs now when we say about the blue ocean strategy most of the entrepreneurs most of the business owners are afraid okay how can i take that risk i have a slightly profit making business don't worry you can do this for a one business unit you can do this for a single product you can do this for a single company you can do this for a, even a single area of a product let's say you are a distributing company take a area that you don't do well and apply a blue ocean strategy for that region so you can do that i think i talked about that point as well and again you will be learning a lot of uh, innovative hr strategies because doing a blue ocean strategy implementing a blue ocean strategy is not easy today even to do a, get a simple thing done in our organization it is a task and to get the people aligned so there are certain very innovative hr strategies uh, deliberated by the blue ocean strategy which you can learn which you can apply even for the red ocean strategies so very simple concept of compulsory execution to voluntary you, you should be able to transform people from compulsory execution to voluntary cooperation how you can do that how you can inspire people to do that there are points okay as we have gone through our organizations you 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 must be sometimes applying all those things some of the things already but with a much more deeper context you can apply if you learn this concept and you can start following them and the other one is execution the first execution principle is how to overcome organizational hurdles this is important even for the uh, red ocean strategy so the, this uh, i think uh, even if a entrepreneur does not engage in the blue ocean strategy creation process now maybe after 5 years and now he is in a competitive mode or he is following the competitive model red ocean strategy still this will help to create a good red ocean strategy to compete better in the market and have a better market share and uh, earn uh, your profits now uh, these days and again blue ocean strategy guides on 10 red ocean traps to avoid because if you are trying to create a blue ocean strategy always there are red ocean traps you will be trapped by them and then ask okay don't go stop please don't step into that side please don't uh, look at that side of the market so all these traps you should know and then you should start following uh, your own paths of creating blue ocean strategies by listening to the market listening to the customers uh, and then you should avoid these red ocean traps what happens now uh, some believe one of the traps is to make a blue ocean ship you have to venture outside your industry it is not so like this there are 10 principles they introduce Uh, that that will be a good learning point for a blue ocean strategist entrepreneur who is going to make one so overall if you go through the this study set concepts processes of a many benefits not only for blue ocean strategy execution even for red ocean strategy actually your red ocean strategy execution will be much smarter much better if you apply some of these blue ocean strategy concepts so from the learnings of this blue ocean strategy you can benefit even in the space of red ocean strategy because you are learning some important tools like strategy canvas via utility map where you will see 108 opportunity table where you can create uh, new market value factors like uh, like circuit du soleil in the circus in the industry they did they created a refined environment they uh, added new uh, music and dance so like that you will see a bio utility map where you can do 108 options uh, even in the red ocean strategy where you can be successful and the pioneer migrator settler map as an organization you should have a mix of businesses you should have red ocean strategy businesses you should have blue ocean strategy businesses otherwise your cash cows today will uh, take you to settle down and you will not have future better businesses and you will be losing out in the overall organizational context in the industry so you should look at where where your businesses are whether they are a pioneer whether they are a migrator whether they are a settler settlers are more or less the red ocean strategies pioneers are more or less blue ocean strategies so there are tools that have been laid uh, in this study where which can definitely benefit entrepreneurs and again if you are a startup entrepreneur now what happens is if you are a startup entrepreneur 
to do a disruptive creation in the market it is unwise to challenge established players head on because then you will get the challenge you will get the hit back much more stronger because you are still new so if you try to do a disruptive creation and disrupt another technology disrupt another player and create something new it's very dangerous Com there are companies who have done that but it is very dangerous so it's better you do a non disruptive creation there are always unseen opportunities that's where the blue ocean strategies are created as non disruptive creations and you have to see those things especially as a startup entrepreneur but if you look at even if you are a established entrepreneur still now established entrepreneur uh, in terms of disruptive creation the, most of these organizations they are in very long term silos established silos they have built their empire sometimes they don't take decisions outside the box so not possible due to organizational silos established for a long time so what happens these established entrepreneurs don't take this critical decision like disruptive creation they go for the non disruptive creation if you look at companies like which have 100 years history 200 years history that's why they lag behind in terms of continuous innovation or creating a blue ocean strategy after few years because they get into those silos so even for established entrepreneur Uh, practically possible is this uh, blue ocean strategy creation process is easy for them because that is non disruptive creation and they don't disrupt the market even they don't disrupt the organizational silos they have already established and they slowly create something new it is like a evolutionary revolution they don't do the revolutionary revolutions they do the evolutionary revolutions so uh, this uh, this is also another aspect that entrepreneurs can benefit so my overall my invitation is uh, we have to move from red ocean to blue ocean where the more fish are there better fishes are there and much more live fish are there rather than competing in the red ocean where you have the cutthroat competition and where your margins are low your profitability are low your roi is low i think uh, my session okay i have taken some additional time uh, but Uh, we can take few questions i'm okay ocean blue is my brand that i have established for uh, blue ocean strategy study i will spell out in the next slide after the question and answer session is over uh, if you have any questions uh, yeah i can answer them okay there will be some easy questions as well as difficult questions i will try and answer the difficult questions uh, otherwise i will tell you uh, what to refer Uh, i hope that you uh, learn something yeah the question time uh don't know whether i would prefer if you can ask uh, straight away by uh, unmuting your mic uh, nobody has sent to the chat no i can just yeah no chat questions any questions uh i hope uh, in the blue ocean strategy study area as well as review area i have covered something new that you have not learned in the course because normally a course will give you the overall outline of the blue ocean strategy because this is after my last 10 years of study as well i have done uh, delivered uh, many sessions and uh, and also with my sales marketing experience i have coupled uh, and i have prepared so many conceptual frameworks here like that uh, competition journey starting from product brand to need competition those are not in the books and i have referred that and linked that and uh, during my studies i have done a lot of associations uh, through the concepts any questions okay i will give you another one minute okay all fine uh, i think uh, it seems that nobody is asking questions that's fine uh, you can learn better if you go through those uh, three books if you are interested in this subject uh, in my case uh, i have these programs deliberated and then designed for the for anybody who wants for any organization who wants 
in fact uh, coming friday also i have a session for an organization that is for the organizational management team that's a one day one full day session so like this i have designed uh, there are there are 11 modules we have uh, i have recognized in this whole case where i uh, with lot of examples for today i discussed only one example that is also briefly but we have about over 100 examples so depending on the depth of the course i uh, give many examples the 11 modules if you find the 12th one is if the industry wants a very focused one then i study the industry i sit with them for about 5 days and then i will take lot of examples from their own industry and do some sessions for the company and then uh, if an organization needs coaching sessions as well it's a 6 months coaching session with the 5 day course plus i take the whole organization through the blue ocean strategy process and uh, this is uh, the if you are interested if your organization is interested you can uh, inform even icpm or even inform me and these are my details in fact i have set up my company only the last year with the brand uh, so i am going to take go through a journey of blue ocean strategy i have uh, uh, much bigger dreams on this subject and to spread this more in the country uh, and do some uh, sessions maybe uh, even outside and i have a youtube channel called ocean blue ajit you can see you can see that actually i am uh, traveling this journey through a youtube channel uh, from uh, already i have released about 16 videos you can see and it's a journey it's in order and if you can uh, watch from number 1 to number 16 and it will be more will be released in the days to come uh, that has also been recently started uh and i'm going through the whole journey step by step with short videos of like 4 to 5 minutes you can enjoy the journey if you can even subscribe so that's free of charge knowledge and much more deeper knowledge with my own experience as well any questions uh if you have any other concerns any doubts any uh, learnings that you have gained maybe i have told something else any contradictory points okay 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 my uh, website don't look at now itself i have not yet finished i just starting off only thank you uh, i would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, institute of uh, chartered professional managers and all of the audience all of you are silent that's fine hope that uh, you will have a uh, wonderful journey here with the cpm as well as in your course and uh, be all uh, let all be successful in the uh, in your a uh, professional course and have a wonderful blue ocean strategy journey to all of you thank you thank you sir